Camping with my family was a perennial tradition. Once the clamoring hallways of school emptied and the dog days of summer settled in, my family would pile into the station wagon and head to the woods. Packing the snail cargo holder and attaching it to the roof filled me with a sense of exhilaration. It meant soon, the miles would be snaking beneath our car's rolling tires and I would pester my parents from the back seat with the annoying yet age-appropriate question, are we there yet? We'll get there when we get there was usually my parents' response. It was an answer I knew by heart, as well as our family's usual destination, William O'Brien State Park. When the park's familiar sign rolled into view, I knew summer had officially arrived. While in the confines of the campground, sounds became more than a vibration on the eardrum. The place imbued each twig snap with the texture of dry wood and the rustle of leaves, with the smell of autumn tucked around the corner, and the hushed whisper of my mom and dad with the soul-jarring simplicity. For these reasons, William O'Brien was hollowed ground for me. When my sneakers crunched underneath the grassy trails, it felt like I belonged there. My sanctuary was an olive green tent, my family's prayer candles were propane lamps and Coleman flashlights. Communion consisted of bottomless cups of hot cocoa and turkey sandwiches. And at night, the air would be filled with chirping crickets and the rustle of leaves from undisclosed animals. After a day of activities worshipping the soil around us, we'd return to our sanctuary to sleep for the evenings. But even this simple task became an event as we marched to the bathroom to prepare for bed, because it served host to the most enormous bugs I'd seen before in my life. Their wings seemed as large as the orioles singing in the trees, their legs the size of the herons splashing in the lake. It was as if prolonged exposure to O'Brien's mystic properties had distorted their bodies to the proportion of birds. Standing by my father and brother's side at the sink, we would brush our teeth in unison. With mint foam oozing from my mouth, I caught my dad's eye and smiled. My dad, my brother, and me. Like bandits, we'd steal back to our campsite, led by the familiar glow of our fluorescent lamp as our guide. My parents whispered their goodnights, and soon the tent would be filled with slow, rhythmic breathing and the crackle pop of neighboring fires. Kneeling at the point where God's feet grazed the earth, heaven approached and dwelled around my slumbering family. The fires, ash-colored logs, fluorescent flames flickering to shades of blue and red, ants foolish enough to crawl upon our firewood before it was pitched into the dwindling inferno were burned alive. Their innards hissed and popped on charred sticks brandished wildly in the air, leaving behind smoke and their trail momentarily burned on my retina. Flash lightsabers creating small pillars of light. Luke. I am your father. The smell of burning rubber, smoldering tennis shoes pressed against the white hot fire grate. Daniel James, get your feet down. You're going to wreck another pair of perfectly good shoes. A green acorn bursting from the soot like a phoenix propelled from the ashes. Golden brown marshmallows, hot dogs on wire sticks, metal lawn chairs, embers flying through the air like a thousand fireflies bid to the heavens by an unheard voice. These seemingly mundane elements combined into something simple, yet transcendent in its beauty, each moment magnified by the company around me. My mother's squinty laugh, my dad's hot chocolate in the morning, my brother and I playing catch habitually punching our baseball gloves to loosen the leather before the ball met its target. Each person magnified these moments until they crystallized as a memory, a fleeting glimpse of youth, the warmth of love. This was camping.